Hello everyone, this is Kaya and my wife Christian Miller will join us also during this webinar. So we would like to both welcome you uh, to this uh, wonderful sharing about dream signs, symbol interpretation. This is a class that will help you uh, to really understand the mechanism of uh, dream interpretation. So we are live right now on, and it's in, with people from many countries that are uh, following our webinars. So it is all, always a joy for us to uh, present uh, this uh, monthly webinar with our nonprofit organization, UCM. Uh, so uh, for those who wish to ask a question during the, the webinar, you can use the chat room. So you can chat to me directly to UCM Publishing if you have questions or if you see your dreams being interpreted. So in the, if you have any things that you want to add during the interpretation, always be welcome to do it. For those who are new, you can always send to us uh, your dreams and your question in advance to our email address at webinar at ucm.ca. If you have technical questions, you can write directly in the chat room to Eloi Delmonico. So he is live from Switzerland and he is assisting me right now. So I am in Canada right now. So, and we will uh, all together answer in the world of dreams. It is so important, friends, because it represents our spiritual autonomy. When we know how to interpret dreams, we can see our program, our inner program. The soul is like a living computer that records positive and negative memories through all our experiences. And these memories creates our data, creates who we are, creates who we are going to become. So we have interesting dream. You will see that we have received and that we will analyze. And uh, well, the first dream that will start our session today is a dream about flying in a school. And, and so this was my favorite dream when I was a child. I had it many times. And every time I woke up, I wanted to go back to sleep to continue dreaming. Here is my dream. And this is... This is a man, this is a man that is sending uh, this dream to us today uh, for interpretation. So when we receive dreams and we still remember them after sometimes 30, 40 years, these dreams are very important uh, to us. And it represents sometimes uh, an aspect that creates a, an opening of consciousness, or it will sometimes also it is connecting to difficult uh, aspects of ourself. And even after many years, a dream can be active in us as a program, as something that we have to understand. So in this case, of course, it's, a, it's an interesting dream. So I'm at school and suddenly I begin flying in the main corridor. It's a wonderful feeling. So after a few moments, I come back to the ground and start walking. It's as if none of the other students had seen me fly. So let's analyze. This is, I, I'm very happy that we have this dream today because uh, to analyze, because there's a lot of children that they can receive dreams like that. I even remember my own daughter having dreams like that. And she's going to be now in India next week. And she has prepared a wonderful uh, lecture that she will present in the GSSI Congress in, uh, in Bangalore, Karnataka. And so she's going to be there for four days a Congress there, an international Congress. And she's sharing a, a beautiful lecture about how to understand the new children and being part of these new generations. She's now 22 years old, but she's very, very advanced and she's been raised in this teaching of understanding dreams and signs and symbol interpretation. And she's now, it's absolutely amazing the work that she's now doing in the world and in many, many countries. So, you know, maybe you have seen the last video also that we have done with Kassara 
and also you know there is like uh, she's been in Europe touring for the last two years so 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 our tours are very successful and we're very happy because she's helping uh, to bring awareness to the world and she's doing this with such a wonderful devotion at her age it's absolutely amazing to have uh, uh, to have uh, access to that. She, some of her students are psychiatrists, psychologists from many countries now. So she's part of the teachers of our nonprofit organization. So, so, uh, so a dream like that, a dream like that is uh, interesting because first we have also to understand uh, that in dreams, there's no tourist. So all that we see uh, are based on symbolic language, and it's a very, very precise language. So here I'm at school, and so school is a symbol of what? Very simple, it's a symbol of apprenticeship. So we go to school to learn, and suddenly I begin flying in the main corridor. So flying is related to the air elements. Remember, friends, the four elements are very important in dream interpretation. Fire is related to energy, air to the world of thoughts, water to emotions, and earth to the world of action. So the four elements are categories of symbols, and all the time we need them to understand uh, our dreams. So flying in dreams, of course, is related to the air elements, so to the world of thoughts. So it means that this man, a uh, long time ago when he was a child, he was, of course, uh, really powerful on the intellectual level. He had like a capacity to have a vision. He was very interiorized also. When we see ourselves flying in dreams, we are very interiorized. We have, we have like live thoughts <laughs> when in action. So we see things and we think very, very, very deeply. We have a global vision. And of course, it's related to uh, to a great intelligence, a really extraordinary intelligence, and also it's related to the spiritual aspects. This is why we see uh, wings uh, with angels. So the wings are just a metaphor to express the capacity of our consciousness to fly, to have a global vision. It's like in meditation, you can meditate, you can stand you know, at one place where you can sit in, in, a, in a meditation position. And simultaneously, your spirit, your consciousness can start to travel and you can be in different places. You can connect with real information, real people. We think sometimes it is just our imagination. But the more we understand symbolic language, the more we can understand that we can do lucid dreaming. So lucid dreaming is meditation. So we are in meditation and we are about to go to sleep in our meditation, but we are still in our body. We feel it. And then suddenly we start to be connecting with multi dimensions and what I call the, 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 the cosmic computer of what God is all about. It's a huge, huge forces in the universe, but very organized. <laughs> and computers are the best way to approach the understanding of the divine forces in the universe. Because you receive dreams. You know, if you follow this webinar, you know what I mean. We wake up sometimes and we're not even sure where we are. We're not even sure if it's the reality being in our bed or if it's the dream. Sometimes it can take three, four seconds to come back and to really realize that we are here on earth. So dreams are very, very powerful, extraordinarily powerful. It is real and it's based on programs. It, it's based on memories. It's based also on our capacity one day to get out of our inner computer and we can connect with other computers, other people, other places, other countries, other worlds. And we can even meet people that have passed away in dreams because they live in another dimension. This is just one dimension. And, and, and for me now with all my, 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 my friends, that some of them are scientists, a lot of them now, and they are really, you know, fusing this approach now 
and uh, and the best bridge to connect spirit and matter is to start to study dreams and and symbolic language you will see science is now really merging with the, the dimension of our of uh, of the spiritual potential in us and the door i think and I, i'm 100% sure that the door the logic door is to go to through dreams is to enter in the knowledge of dream interpretation in symbolic aspects and this way we get to the essence of who we are we get to the essence of the reason why we experiment life which is to develop qualities and to become a better person that's the only program that we all have to achieve and everything we do everything we feel everything we 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 think is in the process of improving ourselves and exploring the multi dimensions of the consciousness of the universe of god to become it to integrate it and this is the mystical aspects of who we are and the reason why we have to evolve and why we have to experiment things in life through families through works through all sort of situation all is there only to develop qualities and one day we realize friends that life is a dream it is like a dream we are in a dimension and it's not more or less important than what we have in dreams it is in connection all the time what you see in dreams are more like a program more aspects that you need to learn in terms of symbols and then after in real life you will attract all sort of situation that will continue your dreams even if it's not what you have seen in dreams uh, you will go through all sort of experience to achieve and to fulfill uh, the 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 notions of uh, developing certain qualities and work on certain weaknesses so that's why the law of resonance is something that is very important in dream interpretation and it's you're going to hear that more and more the law of resonance we so it's it's entering now in universities also in psychology program in psychiatry programs it's very important because it help us in dreams we see symbols so and we resonate we attract these situation and it is the same thing in life so we attract the kind of husband or the kind of wife that is in connection with our program we have qualities that we're going to learn from them and we have also their weaknesses that are there to challenge us and there's a reason why we have attracted positivity or negativity in all kinds of experience and it's based on percentage also resonance is based on percentage sometimes we can attract someone that is really really negative person and of course we cannot act like that but we have let's say 8% of resonance with that person and that's the reason why we have attracted that person in our life and because we need to work on that 8% of memories of resonance so remember that resonance is a very important key to connect with people and also to return to ourselves that's what law of resonance uh, can do in us it, it's like everything we see and meet is like an expression of ourselves so we we come back to ourselves then we process it we analyze it we improve ourselves and then eventually we are no longer bothered by any things or any situation or any person whatever the situation we have knowledge we are we can go uh, beyond good and evil and we have like a vision a global vision of understanding that good and evil are forces of education that evil is not something that we need to fight but it's something that we need to transform that we need to educate so having a beautiful dream like that like flying in the main corridor it was a wonderful feeling of course so this was a dream at that time for that person that was like you know he was a child he was very intelligent very interiorized and it, and even his son is like him you know that's quite interesting because i'm sure he is uh, he's online or he's going to watch this webinar in uh, in uh, later because uh, you know some people are watching the live webinar and others can receive the link and we will post this link 
probably on, on the Facebook, like we do uh, for the free webinars that uh, we offer with our nonprofit organization. So, so that is the main aspect of flying, which is like having like a great spiritual potential, an angelic potential. So having like capacity to feel deeper, to understand also things, you know, on another level of consciousness. Because imagine, imagine real life. When you want to understand a symbol, friends, you need to make the connection with real life. So a table, for example, what do we do with a table? You know, I use that example often. We share. We use that to share a meal, share a conversation, share artwork. So a table is a symbol of sharing. So when you want to know something, you need to ask yourself, okay, okay, what is the reason why I use this? in life what is uh, what is the connection you know that i have with this object sometimes this can be it can be also like a sentiment also to the object if it's the table of your grandfather it's not just sharing it's a sharing of maybe generosity or of like because your grandfather is so generous with you and he's always there and listening and he's always receptive to the family so, so that is something that you add the information, but the sharing part of the table will always stay the same. So a beautiful dream. And then if we continue, uh, and after a few moments, I come back to the ground and start walking. It says, if none of the other students had seen me fly. So of course we can see that in dream and you can say to yourself, I am the only one who is spiritual. I am the only one who is an angel. I am the only one who who's got so much potential and others, they are not open. They don't understand me, etc. We can feel this kind of discrepancy. And this is the kind of dreams where when, when you receive a dream like that, where other people do not recognize yourself. It's like in real life, you know, you are not recognized by others, but it is important that in dreams, you are not only yourself, you are also the other people. So you are a part of you that is convinced that's got great potential, but there are other, your social parts of yourself doesn't connect, doesn't believe in the feelings that you have of being intelligent. So it means that that child didn't have on the social level uh, the confidence of being, you know, of having a great intelligence and having these capacity to understand globally things and having insights and intuitions, but he's got doubts. And all the, when, he's, when he starts to walk on the ground, others, uh, they haven't seen that. They haven't experienced the same thing. So it means that we, the person is, can experiment. That child was able to experiment at a certain level, but he had not yet opened up to uh, is social and collective memories. So this is why sometimes friends, you can be, you can see this webinar and you feel in connection and you say, yes, our dreams are amazing. I'm going to write down all my dreams every night now, like Kaya said, because he said it's important, even if we don't remember them to write them down and try to start to analyze them. And the more I'm going to be learning, the more I'm going to understand. And then you're going to be after this webinar, so enthusiastic about about doing it but after three three four days then eventually oh you're busy you have this and this and this and then you forget to do it and eventually you you know you have like someone you know maybe your uncle and you are like at the dinner on sunday night and he says you know dreams i don't believe in dreams and then suddenly you have doubts you see because this is what enlightenment is all about. You know, this is a very, very high concept and, and level of understanding globally things. When we have reached enlightenment, it means that we have light on everything all the time in the essence. So we don't lose our connection with the divine. We see God everywhere. We see in everything, in every situation, in dreams and in reality, we have this profound connection with the universe. So, so that's why uh, as humans, sometimes it's normal. We, we, we can 
lose our uh, lose our confidence in our potential and and it's not just the spiritual level it can be everything it can be at work for example you can have a dream and of course you you receive a dream and you see yourself going to work being very you know happy and and and, and supportive about what you're going to be doing and you know and then you arrive and you see in a dream all your colleagues that they don't believe in you i can assure you that that day you're going to have like maybe 5% of confidence and your one secretary at work will just say oh there's a mistake in your document and then suddenly you're losing your 5% <laughs> and you're like feel like nothing you know because you don't recognize yourself on the social level so it is you the colleagues are you you see my point so i make a connection with this dream to understand that that kind of dreams can be presented in many many different ways and it will be the same sort of meaning depending on of course this is in school so it's related to apprenticeship if it's at work it's related to the way you work if it's in your house because you can start working walking in your house and then your wife doesn't recognize you you know she's like there and she's just thinking she's in her thoughts and she's not in connection with you there are days like that but it doesn't mean it's going to be like that all the time because you know consciousness changes like weather patterns <laughs> so that's very important when we receive dreams about others because one day i can assure you especially the more that you work with angels because you know you you know that my wife and i we have written many international best seller that are really sharing and talking about the work that we can do with angels uh, and we use the name of angels as mantras and these angels trigger dreams and a spiritual autonomy this is really you know when when we the UCM nonprofit organization is really the mission is to bring spiritual autonomy because when we receive our own dreams it is not what kaya said or anyone any other teacher said it is us that we receive our own answers and this is why we need to learn to interpret dreams but also signs because life is like a dream friends a real one and eventually we can connect like this all the time we live with awareness we live with enlightenment in us in daytime we see the manifestation of god the manifestation of the universe through symbols through uh, interactions through synchronicities etc we understand that we're here to develop new qualities and sometimes it has to go through weaknesses you see this is very easy very easy the the everyone whatever the religion whatever the culture whatever the country that we are born and that we have experiment life we all here for only one reason to develop qualities remember that that's the top of the top of the line you know of of what we need to learn all of us and everyone's going to be is going to agree with you if you say that you're not going to look like a, you know like a weird person saying i think the i think the only the only 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 objective in our life is to develop qualities and to become a better person you can say that in front of the united nation and everyone's going to stand up and applause <laughs> because it's true it's a universal fact and this is why but put this in practice that is difficult <laughs> so and you need to do that every time because we can solve conflicts by being wise by being loving caring and by by using justice we can say no to something we're not we don't need to be angry we say no and we explain our point and we explain and we respect the other part at the same time the other party and we share and then we arrive to a conclusion etc so 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 it is this is what diplomacy is all about a real diplomat he will never get angry unless he's cutting the bridge so he's going to stay like calm he's going to be uh, he's going to be uh, in detachment and he's going to be responsible and he's going to try to make the best thing out of the, the situation of course and if there's a major problem that touches his values and principles he's going to have to say no 
and okay, we don't agree, but we respect each other. And it's, there's, there's words, the, the, the way of talking in a diplomatic way. And it's the same thing on, on the spiritual way, except we have love. We, have, we don't have like a special, special only materialistic interest. Of course, I don't say that diplomats don't have love because I know some of them and they are amazing people. Sometimes some of them are very intelligent. They have global visions. They understand more than we can imagine. And it's not easy. It's a tough job because it's always like mixed with good and evil. And people sometimes in different countries, they can have their own rules and, you know, and governments also. There can be a lot of corruption sometimes. And, and what do you do with a country that there's a lot of corruption? Do you only stop completely to discuss with them and you avoid them totally from the faces of the planet? And eventually they're just going to raise angry. And you see, so sometimes you need to interact with other countries. Like if you have like a brother and your brother is like, a, is, a, is really like a, a bad temper. He's, on, he's not really right, etc. He's always crossing borders that you shouldn't do. So what do you do? Do you cut the bridge all the time? Do you just put him, you know, forever? So sometimes we we need to connect. We need to try to, of course, it doesn't mean that we, we have dinner with someone that is not right every uh, three, four times a week. But at this, the wisdom always helps us to know that we need to stay connected with people and to make things advance. And then we can just talk without doing things. You know, this is that what they do sometimes on the diplomatic level. So they talk. You know, they say, okay, let's continue to talk. We haven't agreed on certain on the points, but it's very important that we talk. So we think about it, you think about it, and it takes it's a process. It can take years, but we need to stay connected, connecting. We need to make uh, the possibility to achieve this. So that is wisdom, friends. Sometimes we we don't understand. Uh, of course, there's a lot of negativity in politics and 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 d diplomatic aspects. I, I'm, I I I agree with you. I'm not saying like I'm not embracing everything, but I'm just explaining a concept, a concept of has spiritual people with profound values. Sometimes we need to become diplomats, even secret agent, <laughs> because we know so many things. We we have premonitory dreams. We see signs, we have premonitory informations. We can, it's an amazing way to live our life. And one day we receive dreams that are quite advanced because we can have dreams about manifestations, material life, a decision, and we can use our dreams to, to guide our, our, our life. I was in Geneva very recently and, uh, and I met uh, during this meeting a very important uh, man that you know that is like uh, in charge of uh, the bank system in a huge huge way and it was very interesting because knowing that you know my my life was devoted to our nonprofit, uh, through the, the the teaching of dream interpretation he was really really touched by that and he and and because in in the world that he lives and he said i'm very you know, in, in decision-making and, and aspects. But he said, I don't receive a lot of dreams. But I can say that when I receive one, I listen to it. And he, he became so, so beautiful when, when he started. He was shining. And he said, and he said, when, most of the time when I have a, when I have a dream, it's because it's, connect, it's in connection with a decision, very important decision that I have to make. And, and sometimes I don't know what to know and I don't know what to say. I don't know what to how to approach the situation. It's like it, it gets confused because it's such one decision is so important for sometimes millions of people. So, 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 but he said, when I receive these dreams, I, so I, I know there's something and I, and I've always received clear information and I've always used them and it worked. And you have no idea at, at very high levels how sometimes people can be uh, can receive insights like that. And uh, sometimes you have strong intuition, so 
the universe is guiding them without them knowing. <laughs> but sometimes they receive dreams and they receive a level of intelligence, a, a charisma that can enter as feels profoundly others. Of course, they're not using it most of the time quite right. I agree with you. But when those, when some of them, and, I, and I'm very optimistic that with time, there will be more and more and more and more, especially with the, all this beautiful work that we do all across the world now with our foundation. So ho hopefully we will enlighten a lot of people and help them to develop a, a consciousness, a true one that will put values and principles at top levels, not only in their personal life, but also in their family life and also in the business life. And in the business life, that's where it gets very tough because, you know, there's money involved. There's like a, you, lots of things involved, but there is ways to do that because sometimes like, like with a child, when you say yes to a child, because you know that he's been doing right at school. So you give, you know, you open a door for him for, you know, to go and play with his friends, you know, it's not going to be totally perfect, but you know, it's good for him to have this activity. Uh, unless if you punish him all the time, then the child will be completely, uh, you know, unapproachable and, you know, and he will close himself and he will eventually not be capable of making choice and experimenting life. So it's the same thing in all fields, friends. It takes a lot of wisdom, lots of wisdom. But with dreams eventually and signs, we can ask. We can ask the universe. We can ask God. We can ask uh, uh, through symbolic language. And we can, even in meditation, you can ask a question and you receive an answer. This is the way we can really live our life one day. This is not just like uh, an approach that is not, you know, mystical. It is for me, real life. <laughs> I live my life like that. I live with the universe in me and, and in, in connection all the time. And I want to do right. So I have to always, always, always check and ask things that I don't know, things that I've not understood precisely. I, I need an answer. I, I don't want to manifest myself just to manifest. It, it's not important for me anymore. I, I want to do things right. That is important. And that is the essence of an initiate, the essence of a spiritual person. So, so, uh, so to come back to this, this dream, so you understand that none of the other students had seen me fly. So it means that he's got a, he had a great potential even when he was a child. But at the same time, when he is in action, sometimes he can easily disconnect himself from his great potential because there's too much energy related to materialistic values and this is was this was already in his school process because all the other children represents parts of him so it means that the values of materialistic life was more important than the spiritual life one person for the spiritual life and many others for the materialistic life you have no idea how people are, most of people are balanced like that because there's survival modes. There are things that we want to make sure that, and, and that we, we achieve, etc. And the memories of just wanting to need to work, to eat, to feed the family, etc. To do the duties and all this creates heaviness in the energy. And most of the time we don't have enough knowledge to increase this spiritual potential. And to eventually, you know, have a profound connection. So one day we can be, we can have the two feet on the ground and simultaneously we have our heads in the skies. And we can connect with the universe, with God, uh, simultaneously that uh, we do things and, and that we make approach, etc. So flying in dreams, so its positive aspects is elevating thoughts. Uh, of course, traveling in our mind and spirit, feeling of freedom that everything is possible, detachment from matter also, great intelligence, seeing things from a higher perspective and global vision. So that's a perfect resume uh, to, uh, to remember when you're going to see yourself flying positively because, of course, there is the negative side. 
always plus and minus. So it doesn't mean that we fly that it is right, you know. So let's let's see the negative points. Uh, it, of course, it was not the, the dream. It was not a case of this dream, even if he was going coming on Earth and there was like discrepancies because friends didn't I haven't seen him fly. So it can be it still can be posit positive, but it means that when there is this approach on the material level, there is like discrepancies. So negative aspects, difficulty to elevate our thoughts and, uh, and being too abstract, loss of connection with concrete reality and matter, tendency to flee our problems and rejection of matter. So the negative aspects can be even related to autism, to mental problems also, schizophrenia, etc., etc., even depression. When we have this, sometimes we can have disconnection because we, we have been hurt on, on the ground on con with concrete action. So we can have dreams where we are just uh, in planes and we don't want to, we don't want the planes to go down or to, uh, to so, so we have these, we have these aspects where we can see discrepancies in, 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 in people. So we have a training, of course, that we give uh, now and the registrations are also online now. It starts in, on uh, the registrations are until December 1st for the next year for 2016. So we have it, it's called the DSSI uh, uh, training. So Dream Sign Symbol Interpretation Training. It's, a, it's an international uh, training uh, of three years for the certificate. Uh, to have like a, a diploma from uh, from the University Michael. So, uh, and it's an amazing program. The program will be given in India. So uh, there is like two workshops of four days in India, but the rest of the program is online. So it means that even if you're from America or Germany or Switzerland or uh, UK, Australia, whatever, you, you can do a trip to, uh, you, to, uh, to India uh, twice a year to attend uh, the four days, uh, uh, the four days uh, workshop, the two four days workshop, one in February and another one in November. And the rest of the year is online training. So every week we have a dream journal. We have a dream journal where our teachers are helping you. You have an individual uh, teacher that is working with you to analyze you make the anal you do the analyze of your dreams and you have a teacher that will uh, that will make the revision and the correction so every week we have that for all students and then we have also uh, online classes so uh, every two weeks we have four hours sessions that we have that people can listen at you know live or they can they can watch it also and receive the link to watch it accordingly to their time of work Etc. So it's really, really uh, flexible. Also, uh, training that it can be adapted to uh, all people. And uh, so, so if you have an interest, you can see on our website. You go in the training session at ucm.ca in the training section, and you will see all the information to register. Uh, so, uh, so uh, if you wish to uh, to uh, discover that. So this is a program that we've been given also. We have psychologists, psychiatrists, therapists from many countries now. And we give this program in French in Geneva, in Switzerland for the European students. And we have one also in Canada for, uh, that, that we give here in Mont Tremblant. So in the Laurentians, in the mountains. So it's a very, very extraordinary, uh, extraordinary training that has been helping and bringing uh, like the most advanced knowledge of dreams and signs interpretation on the planet. And we are not shy in, to affirm that. <laughs> so people can just uh, get in touch with our dictionary uh, on dream sign symbols, the source code that is also available on Amazon or also on our, our website. So this is like one of the most advanced work on dream interpretation now that exists. And we, our foundation is totally devoted to bring that. And it is a nonprofit. So all is based with wonderful values uh, to bring this knowledge and this awareness to the world. So, uh, so singing with whales. So another dream now, let's open another page in our uh, book of knowledge. 
So uh, singing with whales, very interesting dream, uh, very beautiful dream. I'm working with Angel Pahaliach and I received the following dream. So the Angel Pahaliach is related to deliverance. It's related also to uh, very high levels of knowledge also, etc. It's a, it's a really, and it's related also to rigidness. Uh, so having too much rigidness or not enough, etc. So, so it's really a beautiful, beautiful, uh, it's related to transcendence also. So, uh, so when we work with that angel, then we start to receive dreams in connection with that state of consciousness. And this is an amazing, an amazing uh, work when we combine the work with angels and the dream interpretations and analysis, because this is how my wife and I, we have been able to connect to so many dreams. And I receive dreams every night, every, every night, five, 10, 15, 50 dreams a night, uh, every time. And, and it's amazing to, to, to receive this guidance all the time and these visions also of ourselves to improve ourselves. But with time, we receive dreams to help others. And it's like, this is what angelic consciousness is. This is really true, <laughs> really true. I can assure you of that. So, all right. So a man is working with whales. Finally, one day, he goes down underwater. And when the whale sings, he sings back. They sing together. In the dream, I see and experience the entire scene. As thought, it concrete in I thought in concrete reality the whale the man the blue water the air bubbles I hear the whale sing and the man decide to sing back and emitting the same kind of deep deep very very powerful kind of sound a kind of underwater roar Arthur thanks for your beautiful inspiring work that makes everyone's dreams so vivid memorable and so even more educational. So very interesting. So let's analyze first, you know, the whale song can communicate as far as 3000 kilometers. So that's really, really far. Can you imagine that? So the positive aspect of a whale is great physical strength and powerful vital energy to, to delve into our personal and collective unconscious and to face our emotional memories. Powerful, instinctual, vital force on the effective emotional level and great capacity to communicate our feelings, our love and wish to be close, to fuse lovingly. Negative aspects related to whale is a lot of emotional effective needs, tendency to overnourish major dependencies, inclination to become weighed down with negative emotions and energies. Uh, a person who may communicate his needs too intensively, who may take up too much space and invade others due to his emotional, effective, and powerful needs. <laughs> so so you have, you have quite un understood this notion that this dream is about emotions. So remember, Water is related to our emotions. So the fact that it is an animal, animals are related also to our needs. All sort of animals in dreams are in connection with our needs. So, uh, so, uh, so the fact that, that, that the person, this man, it's related to this, it is a woman that received this dream, actually. So the man is the representation of her masculine energy. So you see, and she's watching that. So she's watching her, uh, her way of communication on the emotional level, but in the emissivity, in her masculine energy. So for those who are new, let me explain to you well uh, the polarities. So as a man, I have a feminine polarity inside, and I am a man, masculine polarity in manifestation. So a woman will have uh, the other way. So we'll have like, the masculine energy inside, masculine polarity and feminine energy in manifestation. So a soul's got both polarities. So that, that, is, that is very important to, to understand that. So we have, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, uh, both energy in us. So this is why the notions of the yin and the yang and all these uh, really 
uh, aspects of uh, of energy, even electricity. You know, there's always in and out. So so always these notions of of uh, of receptivity and emissivity. So uh, so the fact that it is a whale, so it means like. The person's got a, an amazing and powerful capacity to communicate with strength, with love and forces, with power on the emotional level. She's got a huge, 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 huge forces of communication and it's of loving communication also, of good emotional communication. And, and, and she is like that for those who... Well, who who knows her, she, she's really a person that she's very loving, very caring, and very also, she's got, a, she's got a forces of motivation that come from her heart. And this is why she can see the whale. So the whale is really like a huge and strong and forces. And it's a very old animal also, because a whale can, can live for a long, long time. So, so it means really that the forces that's got strength and, and, and stability, because this dream represents the positive aspects, of course, of the whale. So, so and, and emitting the same kind of deep, deep, very powerful kind of song, sound, a kind of underwater roar. roar. So, so we see like the, the expression, of course, the underwater roar needs to be uh, beautiful, <laughs> because if it's a roar, <laughs> then it's like okay, it's uh, three thousand kilometers, but it's uh, it's gonna be heard far away, but it's gonna scare a lot of people <laughs> on the way. So 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 it's gotta be it's gotta be very beautiful. But of course, she was really like, like uh, making the, ex the the explanation that it was very very beautiful. So 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 that 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 is the the perspective of of this dream. Then another dream, dream the missing items. Um, so I'm just going to arrange that here. Uh, okay. Thank you. Okay, dream the missing items. Here is a dream I would really like to have interpreted if possible. I was working with Angel 4, Elemia. So Elemia, let me explain to you, Elemia. For those who don't know necessarily the angels, you can go on the website after, you can see that it's free. We have like a section that explains all the 72 angels and, and all the, the attributes and qualities of all of them. And so, uh, so that is like a map. It's like a map, a geographical map of our consciousness when we uh, are in connection with, uh, with angels. So we, when we do the recitation, the mantra, we repeat the name. The work is very easy. Even children are doing that. And then it starts to create focus, concentration. So if you know children that when they have hyperactivity, etc., mantra with angels are the best things that they can do. Uh, we have with our clinics that we have with the Dr. Bouchard and, and, uh, and Denise Fredette and my wife, Christiane, also works at the clinic. And we have lots of patients that they come and even children, they come with hyperactivity and we give them exercise. I had one uh, that I have seen during the week, uh, an amazing young boy. And he's so open, 12 years old. He's an amazing genius in everything. He's, you know, he succeeds everything in school so easily, too easily, actually. <laughs> so it creates for him like distractions and he's really open to everything and so concentrate. And he's got you know, some, some difficulties because of that, because of his sensitivity. Sen the level of sensitivity is so high, so high that he, he, he kind of changes all the time. And Kesara will be sharing about that in a lecture in India. She's going to open some very, very profound knowledge that will help uh, people to understand during the Congress uh, aspects about these new children. And in India, of course, we, we, we offer now in many, many schools, we have many, many thousands of students now that are following the Angelica School program. It's a free program that we offer with our, with our, with our uh, foundation also in Vietnam. We have schools in Vietnam, we have schools in the UK, in California, etc., cetera, in, in different places in the world now that they are following this program. 
and it's amazing the result absolutely amazing children they just love to have this multidimensional uh, communications with them to understand their dreams to understand the signs and the various possibilities of the consciousness and they work with angels also so we explain to them how to do the mantra so uh, it's quite amazing it's a quite advanced training for them so let's let's discover that so angel for elemia is related to divine power so the capacity to really you know manifest on a huge level and to have the power uh, to decide to manifest etc and it's related also to divine power so it's related to the fact that we can use our spiritual powers in manifestation like clairvoyance clairaudience clairsentience and we can do things with these powers and not having them on an abstract level so i was with my twin sister in a store to exchange a faulty nail polish she had just brought so i had no time to put on my scarf and close my coat so i went i got outside the store i was a little bit cold we noticed it, that it snowed while we were shopping and that we'll need to remove the snow around the car nearby there was a group of theater actors that were singing and dancing in a circle little by little they started leaving two by two forming couples my sister and i sat down in the snow to watch them meanwhile i was trying to put on my scarf and close my coat remember that we'll talk about that the group progressively came near the place where uh, we were sitting until there were only two couples left they came very close so i had to move my stuff instead of leaving with the last guy the last girl left without him she didn't want to form a couple the men said it's not supposed to happen like that and went running after her my sister and i started picking up my stuff sunglasses and many sponges and i realized that i was missing some items veronique then appears and helps me to retrieve the missing sponges people had left with those by mistake close by the man who was angry with the girl who didn't want to form a couple left very quickly with his blue car so quickly that the top of the car took off in dreams everything is so possible so fortunately there was a police car on the road so he didn't make it too far he was arrested by the officer he heard some people saying that the man was close to being schizophrenic I then follow Veronique to an apartment building and when we knock on the door to retrieve the rest of the missing items twin sisters so so okay uh missing okay that's the end of the dream sorry so twin sister positive aspects of twin sister it's a lovely person funny receptive best friend of course caring and the negative keeps everything inside has difficulty expressing herself when something is wrong or it can be a little too harsh when she does but she works really hard to change this so the person is saying to us her twin sister what she means for her and veronique it's a person i knew a little bit in high school the positive she was cheerful confident and the negative negative selective can be secretly mean uh, with other girls don't so you see that's very important to understand the positive and the negative aspects with all people all situation depending on what we lived and what kind of situation we went through with the person because of course uh, being cheerful confidence is, is wonderful and selective can be secretly mean with other girls so we see that's negative aspects where she can be not really nice with other people so all right so let's now now to analyze this dream with step by step because that's very important to understand friends the notions of doing dream interpretation step by step so i was with my twin sister in a store to exchange a faulty nail polish she had just bought so you see it's a faulty nail polish so of course it can be positive it's a natural product etc but the negative aspects will be the superficial aspects 
and it's related to the nails, related to the hands. And the hands are symbols of giving and receiving. And the nails are the symbol of sometimes aggression in the giving and receiving. We can scratch, we can be like a, a cat, we can be like a tiger uh, on a huge way. So, so you see this notion where we so sometimes the negative aspects of this is related to seduction also. We really want to, you know, uh, to, 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 because it's the extreme aspects of our hands. So we want, to, it shines also. Sometimes there's colors and aspects like that. So it attracts the attention. So the negative aspects, we want things. So, so there's a focus on our, in our hands. And we put red colors or whatever. So this way we can attract the attention to get something. Having something for ourselves is important. So it will be people that they can grab things. They can, you know, they can, they can hold things. They can have possessive energy in them. Uh, and that is like uh, masked with uh, energy of uh, seduction. So that's the negative aspects. And the positive aspects is related, of course, to aestheticism, so to aspect where we want things to be beautiful and nice. And, and if it's not done, uh, if it's done well with natural products, things that are good for, for the body also, not just for the look, then, it's, then it can be positive, of course. If it's not done in a purpose where you only think about that. <laughs> There's certain people, they live for their nails, you know. And they put so much money while people are not eating and on the planet and they spend so much money every week or so sometimes for certain people. So we live in a special world, as you can know. So, all right, so let's continue. So she's just bought that. So it's your twin sister and a twin sister also is related also to the mirror. So aspects of who we are. So the, the mirror effect. So two relationship with others. There's two persons. So relationship with others. So 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 that that's the notions where the person is related. Also the way that we exchange, etc. It's two women related to the inner world. Also and the sister, the twin sister. Of of course, it's a it's an energy, it's a person where we share. We are very close to the person. So, so that, that is, that is an, an aspect that is important also where the sharing, you know, the, the, when we are twins, that's the first thing that we need to learn when we are twins is sharing because we have like a, a notion where we need to share everything. So, so of course there's a problem right at the beginning because she needs to go back to the store and because of superficial aspects, too much possessivity in needs. And I had to time uh, to, to, to put on my scarf and close my coat. So we see that when something is not going right, because now you see she wants to grab something, she wants to buy something and it didn't work. So because she is the twin sister in the dream, remember, she's not only herself, she is the twin sister. That's her part, so, so of her. So, uh, so, and if we go, if we go back to the meaning of the negative aspects of the twin sister, we keeps everything inside as difficulty expressing herself when something is wrong or can be a little too harsh when she does, but she works really hard to change this. Of course, this is you working also on yourself. So, uh, so the fact that you need your scarf and you enclose your coat while you are in the store, etc. So when I, I got outside the store, so we weren't away. So it means that because it could have been like uh, summertime outside, you see, in your dream, it's your dream. So it means that when something is not going well, when you buy things, it's not going the way you want, you start to have lack of, uh, of want, uh, so lack of love. So it means that you are even can be sometimes uh, 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 buying things because you have lacks of love and you compensate and that's why you see that having you know the notions of uh, where, where things it, it is too cold we notice that it snowed while we were shopping and then we'll need to remove the snow around the car so you see it didn't go well in the store so then it created blockages of lack of love Difficulty in exchanges with the store, you need to change something, it didn't work, etc. It took up your time. So you see you have difficulties in sharing with people. And we will see lots of couples after in your dream having difficulties until there's no more couple. So you see how sometimes you, you have like something very, very important in this dream. 
to understand. So the car is the way that we advance. So, so you see that when you have like, let's say just, you can have a husband or you, you maybe have or your ex-husband and then one thing didn't work in the house. Very, just for your nails, you know? And then you were like, you know, unhappy and just because of one small thing and you forgot that your children were healthy and your husband was caring, etc. And then you start to be upset just because of that. That's the kind of, because you feel limited, you have too much needs in matter, too much needs to, you want to advance, to go to your objective and it's got to be fast, 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 when you want, when you want, when you want. And now you went to the store and there's a blockage and all this creates confusion in you. So you see how interesting it is. So then nearby was a group of theater actors that were singing and dancing in a circle. You see, you know, your car is stuck and then you see that you have parts of you that when you have blockages, instead of being angry, then you start to play roles. You start to say, oh, it's okay, it's okay, but it's not okay. <laughs> it's not okay inside, but you will compensate again. You transfer your difficulties of having snow around the cars, and then you start to dance and chant, uh, and, but it's not done with a heart. It's not done with you. It's done just to try to forget what is happening and just to be positive, to stay positive. So it's an overconfidence uh, uh, way of acting. And lots of people are like that. They push and push, you know, to always make sure everything is perfect and positive. So my sister and I sat down and in the snow to watch them. Meanwhile, I was trying to put on my scarf and close my coat. You see, you have difficulties. You have difficulties when, because, uh, you know, so, so, so you, the snow, because you have coldness and memories in you where, the snow, the negative aspects of snow is related to memories, related to coldness, related to lack of love and warmth that you had and that you tried to compensate uh, differently. The group pro progressively came near the place where we were sitting until uh, there were only two couples left and they came very close. So I had to move my stuff. So you see, the couples, you know, they, they're too close to you, too close to your stuff. You see, matter, relationships, you're afraid of, of being robbed or whatever, or you feel, uh, you feel uh, that uh, people are, are like, like taking too much space. So this is you also. So you see, when you are in relationships, sometimes, uh, you know, everything is for you and, and for yourself. And you can, you can sometimes... Uh, uh, expand too much uh, and not think enough about others. So instead of having, uh, leaving with the last guy, so, so you see when we say the last guy, you know, it's not the man or the, the you know, the, the, the it, just the fact that you use the word guy to talk about a man, you know, we see there's a, there's a difference. Of course, a lot of people are saying, oh, there's this guy, there's this guy. That's such a common expression but it's not an expression that is based on total respect and love and, and, and recognition of the other person. A guy is just a guy, you know, it's like, a, it's not a man, you know, it's not, there's like a difference in, 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 the, in the intention. So that's because you have difficulties with men and so you try to put them down. So this way you are more important and this creates difficulties in the couple. Sometimes it was not your husband, he was just a guy. He was just a guy of doing, you know, uh, you know, the groceries, just go and do and do groceries. Uh, so he was not your man, your lover that was going to do the groceries. It was the guy <laughs> of, of the house when you were not uh, happy about what he was doing. So you see the last girl left without him. So you see difficulties in couples, difficulties in relationship, two person at the beginning of the dream, twin sisters, program of sharing, program of understanding, sharing. You see, all this is in connection. My sister and I started picking up uh, uh, stuff, sunglasses and many sponges. You see, you compensate again. When it doesn't go well in your couples, then you go to buy things at the store or you go to eat at the restaurant to forget. You open the TV, etc. You go to the theaters, you compensate. And this is something that you do. And that is eventually whatever you can buy, 
you will not it will not make you happy so you see this is a circle at the beginning we compensate we compensate it works at the beginning because it changed the mind but as soon as we have done things over and over eventually we don't want things this is why we see a lot of rich people sometimes they become very empty alone and sad and they can buy any everything but they have done this they've compensate 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 and and if they come from a rich family they started to compensate when they were young because their parents were buying things because they were not there with them so and eventually it doesn't work they become empty and alone and it's it's very very interesting to 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 understand that being rich doesn't make us happy it's the intention within of course we can have lots of wealth and abundance and we can be happy but it's very difficult to achieve that because when you have so much choices to do are you going to take care of your wife and your kids uh, because the lawyers and the, the accountants are more important because all the decisions and you're important at the house uh, and and not at the house but at work so when you are at home you just want to relax so much that you don't want to talk to your wife anymore there's a lot of people like that <laughs> so my sister and i started picking off my stuff etc so we talked about that and verenic that appears and help me to retrieve the missing sponges you see the sponges what is the thing about sponges in the middle of a dream like that it's related to the notions of, of sponging things you know wanting to you know uh, uh, that there's you have this energy where you like a sponge and and you try to clean you try to to use that in a sense to to for for to balance yourself to compensate again you need things etc so and close by the man was uh, was angry with the girl who didn't want to form a couple etc so you see in the blue car blue is communication and eventually we see that the police car arrived and there was like kind of this guy got arrested this man got arrested and the officer is there we heard some people saying that the man was close to being schizophrenic so it is you it is you it's your inner man inner man that when he's not happy he wants things he goes too fast you do things that are not right you see you need to be careful with that because things can happen in your life you are dispersed too much very intelligent but you always balance and compensate and compensate and you know something is not going well right the way you want then you just do something else and you don't close the doors well you don't work your relationship you don't cleanse you don't start to think about what happened and then you go back to another aspects and then you continue the same thing and then you start over and over again but you don't start over because you start over with the same problems that you bring with you so that very interesting dream so now let's we're going to take like an intermission an intermission uh, of uh, five minutes and then my wife christian will come and share with you also some beautiful testimonies uh, during this uh, webinar so let's see each other very soon with christian I would like to welcome you to this webinar. It's always a great joy for me to share this teaching. And we will continue with a concrete example. Because as Kaya explained, it's so amazing to know symbolic language. Because not only can we decode 
and interpret our dreams, but also our concrete life. And when we decode our life like that, it creates an amazing opening and our life is really multidimensional. So let's start straight away with this concrete example, the two tightly attached rings. Sign. I accompanied my husband to his daughter's wedding, making up my mind to be an observer and discreetly study my resonance with my husband's family and the guests, as well as my own attitude to the wedding. This experience activated profound work on myself, particularly in relation to three questions. The event was organized in all simplicity, in the natural setting of a sugar cabin. I noticed a for sale sign at the entrance. What's the symbolic meaning of a couple getting married in a place that is up for sale? During the ceremony, my husband's daughter's young four-year-old son from her previous marriage was to bring up the wedding rings on a little cushion. Worried that the young boy might drop the rings, the mistress of ceremonies sewed the rings onto the cushion instead of just a loose bow that would be easy to untie. When the time came to exchange rings, the bride couldn't detach the rings. They were too tightly sewn onto the cushion. As she pulled and pulled, trying to undo the rings from the cushion, some of the audience began to discreetly laugh. Others whispered questions such as, what does that mean? How strange. Don't you agree? Does that mean that they shouldn't get married? Seeing that the beautiful wedding atmosphere was beginning to deteriorate, I told myself that I had to abandon my idea of solely remaining an observer. Finally, I got up and very calmly walked toward the couple with a small pair of scissors. I had in my handbag. Just as my husband's daughter was becoming upset and had tears in her eyes, she breathed a sigh of relief and whispered a heartfelt thank you. The bridegroom took the scissors and with a amused smile cut the thread. When I returned to my seat, I felt I, and noticed how my gesture on the outside had settled the audience and their reactivated resonance related to the incident. What's the symbolic meaning of this, the excessive attachment of the wedding rings? Later that day, I heard Diana telling some of the guests that she intended to participate in an activity called Trash the Dress, where newlywed brides can ruin their wedding dress, having fun, under the pretext that it's all for a good cause. Diana had already unworld for this. Extract from a newspaper article. Soling one's wedding dress for charity. Six newlywed brides are taking part in a fundraising event for a children's hospital foundation in Canada. The brides will participate in a photo session with six photographers during which they will soil their wedding dress. According to one of the photographers, 
the event called Trash the Dress is an opportunity for the brides to do what they'd love to do on their wedding day, but that's normally impossible. This year, the fundraiser has raised over $25,000 for the foundation. I openly asked Diana if she had thought about the symbolic significance of her choice, and she replied, no, I only want to find another use for my dress. It's not something we can wear very often, is it? I replied, no, but it does represent the sacredness of marriage. It's beautiful. Maybe your daughters would like to wear it on their wedding day rather than see you destroy it. Her two daughters were there and immediately nodded their heads to say yes. Indeed, they'd like that. Of course, you are free to do as you like. But if I were you, I'd think more deeply to see what is making you want to do this. She became very serious and several people, men, women and children, told her it was such a pity to spoil her beautiful dress. So third question, what's the symbolic meaning of wanting to soil and spoil one's wedding dress? So let's start straight away with the anal analyze of this uh, work, the sharing. As Kaya explained, you know, we have both polarities masculine and feminine. And the, one of the ultimate objectives of our life is to be able to fuse these both polarities, the right emissivity and the right receptivity, to fuse, first of all, our inner couple. That's very important, very, very important. And whenever we are in front of a man or a woman, Depending the reactions we have, we can know ourselves better. With what? Through the law of resonance. And of course, that was very interesting, the sharing of this woman. And she said that, okay, I go to this wedding and I'm going to discreetly, notice this word discreetly, study my resonance with my husband's family and the guest as well as my own attitude to the wedding. Everybody, when they go to a wedding, it triggers memories, positive memories, but also sometimes negative memories. Memory in the past or even in the present, people, they have been hurt, they have, been, they have wounds, you know, they, it's very difficult separation, sadness, and just to watch, to attend a wedding like that, it can trigger, engender all sorts of emotions, all sorts of feelings. And this is why it's very important to study ourselves. We can know ourselves much better. So we see that to put the word discreetly could have been very positive to be discreet. Okay, we analyze the reactions, our own reactions. But you've noticed perhaps after that when she had to interv intervene, um, she said, I, ha I had to abandon my idea to be just an observer. It was as though at the beginning, okay, I go to a wedding, but... I'm not going to face too profoundly my own memories regarding marriage, regarding the fusion of my both polarities. This is why she said, mm, I'm discreet. But, you know, a scenario, an event was also programmed for her to be more involved and to analyze and study her reactions also more profoundly. So that's, you know, the law of resonance, as Kaya explained, so important is the fast way to evolve.
because we're always aware, conscious of our reactions. The slightest disturbance can be a sign, okay, what I see, I'm not like that. But on some level, I may still have some memories that resonate. Maybe it's just on the level of my thoughts, energies, ancient memories, and I can work on that. And there are angels that help to to fuse both polarities. Angel 48, Mihail, Angel 2, Jeliel. If you want to work on your inner couple and outer couple, also if you are in couple, these are angelic states of conscience that are very, very powerful and very helpful. So let's continue with uh, this beautiful sharing. Very interesting. You see how through a concrete event, we can understand so many things and everybody can understand this story on some level. But you see, with the knowledge of symbolic language, we can go more deeply and also understand some reactions that go much beyond a wedding. You know, these reactions can happen in our daily life and we can recognize them when we work on this kind of memories. So the event was organized in all simplicity in the natural setting of a sugar cabin. And she noticed a for sale sign. You know, one day we know that there is no coincidence. Everything is there and has a special meaning all the time. It's like a mathematical equation. And this is why one day when we are aware of that, this is so magical. Our life is really multidimensional. So let's analyze a sugar cabin. It is a place where maple products are made, especially here in Canada. It's very, you know, there are a lot of sugar cabins, including the famous maple syrup. It is located in the heart of a maple grove where maple syrup farmers collect the spring sap from the maple trees. Okay, so let's analyze. I've added an information about the how we do the maple syrup. The sap is also called maple water. This water is evacuated from the tree cells in autumn to enable it to survive the winter frost and cold. It is neither raw nor elaborate sap, which are both bitter. Maple water is naturally slightly sweet, although it is very subtle. There is almost no taste at first. You see, Everything that exists triggers, has got a state of conscience. Just the fact that the sap is there to help the tree, you know, in, when, when it's cold, to, you know, this water is evacuated from the tree cells in autumn to enable it to survive the winter frost and cold. So first of all, sap is related to what? water element, so we can make a link with our emotions. It's also related to the tree, very important symbol. It's a symbol that, you know, represents the connection with the earth and heaven. It's a symbol of construction. It's upright. It's generous with the leaves, you know, so it's a great symbol. So it's it would mean in terms of conscience. And even if it's not a dream, you know, everything triggers, it's codified. The sap is codified to create this possibility of, you know, to, uh, for the, the tree to survive even when it's cold. It means that we can have emotions even when we are in an environment where it's cold, there are cold emotions, remember, because when there, there, there is snow it's, and it's the negative aspect, it's frozen emotions. We can produce beautiful emotions that will prevent from freezing. Imagine what is codified in sap. 
everything is codified with things that create state of conscience. It is so interesting when we live like that. So, and then a sugar cabin is usually where this, this sap, this maple water is transformed into maple syrup with the help of a system of kettles and pans where the sugar becomes more and more concentrated at each stage. So you see in terms of conscience, it's just like in a dream. It's, it's related to the fire element, warmth, and it's a, it's a concept of alchemy. With alchemy, transformation, it produces something that is so sweet. So you see, it's a great, great symbol in the positive aspects. So there is an equation in this story. It's the sugar cabin uh, plus wedding. So in the positive aspects, if everything had been positive, wanting to get married in a sugar cabin means we want to experience this state of conscience and to nourish ourselves on these emotions that protect us from emotional coldness and enable us to remain connected and maintain the link between heaven and earth and also to materialize well, the tree. So you see, we, we make the equation with the tree, with all the process to create uh, maple syrup and sugar cabin, and it creates something great because maple syrup is to nourish. And one day we, we understand that we don't feed ourselves only with physical products, uh, food, but on all levels, with our thoughts, with our emotions, with our uh, energy. It's a kind of nourishment. So sometimes it's positive, sometimes it's negative, sometimes there is a mixture of both. So, and then we continue with the positive aspects of the sugar cabin and wed wedding. It is also related to a process of alchemy and transformation via our spirit and heat, warm emotions, we've just explained, to be able to reap gentleness, sweetness, to nourish ourselves and others in society, in the collectivity, transformation process via heat and shared with others. That's what we would like to inscribe, you know, in, in, in us. So, but since there was a problem with the, you know, the ring and even the, the music didn't play on when it was the time. So there were a few problems during this wedding ceremony. So we have to take into account the negative aspects. Since there were difficulties during the wedding ceremony, we can say that there is too great a need for sweet gentleness and softness. So we seek it on the outside because there is not enough inside and nourish ourselves on too much sugar due to emotional dependencies and lacks, as well as emotional hurt and wounds. We also know that the food served in most sugar cabins, which, are, which also serve as restaurants featuring traditional country cooking, is very rich, too rich sometimes, and not vegetarian, hence a tendency to nourish ourselves too instinctively on the social level and in the fusion of our both polarities. So you see here it's, and of course it's, it's related to simplicity when we want to get married in a, a cabin, you know, uh, in this environment. Then the, the question of the for sale sign, the fact that the sugar cabin was up for sale, that's very interesting. You know, she noticed that. Um, in the positive aspects, if everything had gone, you know, well, it was well organized, everything was per good or well organized, it would have been, okay, there is something that is going to change. Because, you know, if we put a house for sale, something, in, there will be new people in this house. So something is going to change. Okay, everything is positive and there is a change that is also inscribed. But here, since there were problems, indicates a way of behaving and functioning in going to change and needs to be changed as regards the way it is now. A cycle has to end 
And when we get married, we do indeed begin a new cycle. So there is duality that has been inscribed and it needs to be changed. Of course, as you were studying your resonance, there is a message for you too. Of course, the, the person who sent this story, you know, she has something to understand on some levels. Of course, not necessary to that level where all there, there were quite a lot of problems, but she has to understand something that blocks this a fusion of her both polarities and also to to commit herself um, in 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 the couple so because of course as it is mentioned when uh, when there is a wedding normally it's the beginning of something it's a new stage you see uh, but here there were of course difficulties so What's the symbolic meaning of the excessive attachment of the wedding rings? That's an interesting question. It's the, the four-year-old son, you know, from a previous marriage that was bringing on a cushion the, the two rings. And it's the mistress of ceremonies that sued, assumed it, uh, them too tightly. So when we don't know the, the law of resonance, you know, the person can be angry at the mistress of ceremony it says, wow, you know, she did that and it spoils our, our, our wedding ceremony. No, 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 no. One day we understand the law of resonance. If this uh, woman was chosen to organize the ceremony, there is no coincidence. We can't, she did her best. We can't be angry at her. This is why, you know, we become so tolerant. Say, so I've got something to understand. And we can understand, like in a dream, the, you know, the young boy from a previous marriage, it means that if she is separated from the father of this young boy, there was something that didn't, things that didn't work well. And it's still there. It's not cleansed because one day we may have had problems with, you know, ex husband or ex-boyfriends or ex-girlfriends, but we cleanse this memory. We transform the memories that have created this outer situation that was negative. But in that case, it was not, uh, the, you know, her path to cleanse and transform. So it means, okay, I, I had problems in my previous couple. And now, you know, I don't want, you know, to a failure again and she was scared of course it was good you know to to pre to take precautions and to uh you know to to um to just uh, organize a loose bow that would be easy to untie but here it was okay I, it's like the two extremes are there i'm scared so there is again a failure um and and there are other memories that uh, you know uh, prevents from committing it's too tight you see say, oh no 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 I don't want to commit myself again you know I had it was it hurt me it was difficult separation so the the two extremes are there you see just in this uh, in this caution that the, that the rings were too tightly uh, um, uh, you know attached you see how just one thing like that can involve so many memories behind this misaction. And we see that uh, uh, there were reaction in the audience. Uh, it's also, you see, and you can, you can make a link with also your daily life. When there are these memories of dualities, of, of fears to commit yourself are there, it creates doubts, it creates People were laughing, you know, uh, but they were trivializing things. People sometimes laugh because they don't want to face their own memories. And it's a way to feel lighter, but not, not facing the real things. And so, you know, it creates doubts in you. And sometimes you have that also, you know, the, the person wrote this uh, story on some level, you may have doubt. And this is why sometimes it's difficult to fuse your both polarities, your missivity, receptivity, their difficulties. 
But we see that she abandoned her idea of solely remaining an observer. You see, this is why I mentioned the discreetly. I wanted to discreetly observe my resonance, but no, 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 now you are going to be involved. And she had to abandon that idea. Okay, I have to face also my own memories. And we see that she has got a pair of scissors and and and, and it's the, the, the bridegroom that took the scissors and it was amused and cut the thread. So it means the man, as Kai explained, is the board of action and the woman is the inner world. So it means that in her inner world, there are memories that creates uh, difficulties to fuse, to commit to herself. But in the world of action, she can do some things, you see. But still, there are some memories in her inner world that have to be uh, transformed. We see that with her charisma, powerful energy, she can settle the audience and it's well written, their reactivated resonance. Because this is why people were disturbed. It was not only because of the, the two tightly rings, it was because of their own memories that were activated. Separation, divorce, difficulties, etc. You see how just an event can create... Uh, resonance and then all the story of the trash dress that's very interesting for a good cause it seems to be fashionable now to trash a wedding dress uh, this this means something very very important you know nowadays uh, the 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 unconscious the collective unconscious is so open it means that the memories uh, that have been accumulated are activated and it's no longer repressed it's open and what in the past could be repressed now it's activated it's an emergence of certain memories this is why they do that and they think they do it you know by joking or fun in here for good cause but it means something very and of course this uh, hospital foundation organized that to some people may say, yes, but it was a good cause. It was to have children. Yes, but, you know, as a, a collective um, organism or society or whatever, we have a responsibility. It triggers, it triggers somehow negative uh, behaviors to do that. So we see that sometimes there, there is a mixture of negative memories and, the, and altruistic memories but it's a mixture uh, of both of them and it does not create beautiful things. Sometimes um, some people will use um, generosity or altruistic um, intention, but to uh, express distortions, you see? So that's very important. In the past, before celebrating their marriage, men had a stagnite where they could indulge in certain erroneous behavior that they knew they couldn't indulge in once, uh, once they are married. But now it's the woman who is doing that. It's the interior. Remember, friends, that a woman also represents the interior. So it means that even from the interior, there are memories that would like to do things because remember, they do that, trash the dress, uh, it's something they would like to do during uh, the, the wedding, uh, their wedding day, but it's impossible. So these are memories uh, where they, they want to, uh, and, and it's in French, uh, we don't talk about stack and night, but to bury, bury the bachelor life. That's also a very interesting expression. So we want to bury, you know, things, uh, but when it's buried, it's not solved yet. I have, I'm going to repress some, okay, I'm going to get married, but I have still some uh, memories that creates infidelity, uh, needs for, you know, intense sensations, and I'm going to bury them, to repress them. That's also a very interesting expression. So we see that she tried to convince her 
to, to express the sacredness of marriage, beautiful uh, purity. And she used, you know, the expression, okay, but maybe your daughters want them. Uh, it was, you know, one day we, we know that we have our own dress, etc. But it's another question that we can talk about another day. But she tried to convince her. But for her, it was a good cause. But behind that, Behind that, there were memories uh, that, you know, when they want to, sometimes they, they, roll, uh, they roll up in mud, you know, deep mud. It's mud, it's a mixture of water and, and earth, so emotions, and two down-to-earth uh, emotions. And, you know, I don't want purity, I don't want that. I need some other sensations. This is why you see... This is the emergence of some memories uh, in the name, for example, of a good cause or of a joke. Uh, so you see how we understand symbolic language. It is so interesting. So for this woman, it was also, uh, you know, a good event to, um, to study ourselves and to improve our, our inner couple for a better relationship with her husband, a happy, you know, happier relationship. You see how it is so important when we work on ourselves and when we know symbolic language, we can live an amazing life. And, and you know, unlike normal couples, after a few months or a few years, it's, it's you know, it's uh, sad or there are a lot of conflicts. But when we work like that, I can assure you, friends, our inner couple in, involves and improves, but also our outer couples. Happiness, it's even more and more, day after day, more beautiful. So that was a beautiful sharing. And uh, thank you for taking part to this webinar. So let's go to the, the next, uh, there are things that we're not going to see this time. So the next webinar will take place on October the 31st, and it will be a great joy for my husband, Kaya, and myself to continue to share this beautiful teaching. God bless you. <laughs>